Welcome back. My name is Lisa. This is part two of my trip to Kauai. I decided to separate out the travel portion from the spiritual aspects of it. Y'all that know me know I can't help but to share the spiritual parts of it, right? So for my spirituality little lovers, I hope you enjoy. Share some nuggets of my adventure because I highly recommend visiting this sacred, healing, beautiful island of Kauai. If you are familiar with vortexes, Sedona is known for vortexes. So if you've been to Sedona and you've felt the energy and the shifts of Sedona, Kauai, you can relate. It's very similar. I ate at the one hotel on purpose. It's obviously known for its organic food, clean meditation ceremonies. There was a cacao ceremony, a breathwork ceremony, a sound bath, like all the things that I would love generally in my life were available to me in this incredibly healing space. My favorite activity of the entire trip, the womb healing. I had never heard of them before. It's not something I was on my radar. It's this womb healing, sis, whoo, sheesh. Okay, I've done ayahuasca a few times. I've done the toad a few times, so I'm familiar with ceremonies. Use the Peruvian chant, I wanna, is it a chant or a song, to my womb. Right, so we started with me face down on a beautiful, heated, ginormous rose quartz lab. Like, oh, oh, I wish I had one of these in my home. And so she was working on the lower part of my back, working on the back of my womb. It wasn't very long, and she said, your, your womb is ready to go. You are, your womb is ready and for healing, which I can tell you, I knew I was ready for healing. I intentionally booked this trip because earlier 2023, I have been working on healing daddy issues and I did a ceremony to heal my, my daddy issues. It's really fun of me because I think all of us have daddy issues, men and women. Um, we all have parent issues, right? Recently, my philosophy is that we incarnate with the parents that we choose to learn the struggles through. Like we, when we sign up to be a human in this vessel, we tell spirit, I want to have these kinds of challenges in my life. And that's how you come through is you pick I think you pre-pick your parents based on the level of struggle you want to endure. And working through the anniversary of my brother's drowning, which was July 23rd, a one-year anniversary. I actually spent my one-year anniversary with Beyonce, so it was probably the best experience that I could have had to get me through that, that first year. So I'm very blessed and honored for the relationship that brought that into my life. Um, I'm forever grateful for that. It was around November, Thanksgiving that my breathwork coach Amy, who y'all know I love, made the comment that you want your father, but you don't necessarily need your father, you need your mother. And we discussed how I never really had been mothered. When my mom and dad got pregnant, my dad divorced her. My dad never wanted a kid. My mom couldn't wait to have a child. On my mom's birthday in June, she got pregnant with me on her birthday. She was beyond excited. The pregnancy for my dad caused him to start an affair. Mom met someone a few years later in a bar and they had a whoopsie known as my brother Eric. 10, 11 months later, they had a whoopsie known as my brother Chris. Because I was four and five years older than these brothers, my mom used me as a caretaker. Probably from the age of six, I started becoming her assistant. I, as a people pleaser, gave up my need Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. I gave up my need for compassion and love and protection to put my brothers first. I remember distinctly around 10 years old helping my mom create her first company, The Little Dutch Mop, and I made her flyers and I put the flyers all over for her on my bike, put them all over the subdivisions and neighborhoods and lived in rural Wasco. Once my mom started working, then I sort of became the mom. I would bathe them and I would read them the bedtime stories and I would put them to bed and I'd get them out of the house in the morning. I was the parent partnership that my mom didn't get from my stepfather, that she didn't get from her husband. He he was in a space of sadness, come home and drink. And that's what started my relationship with drinking, right? Or my fear of being around drinkers was at this age. Inevitably what caused me to pack a bag when I was 14 and leave this household. That lack of care that I received as a young girl at that prime age of six or seven when I became an assistant and a, a nanny of sorts, I stopped being mothered. I became an adult. I remember 12, 13 years old being told that we didn't have food and we weren't able to go on vacation because my dad wasn't paying his child support. And so it was my fault and that we didn't have the food. And I think that's a really heavy thing to put on a 10 year old person. Like I was a child, I was not an adult. 
I was not prepared to cry. You can survive without a father. Really hard to grow up with healthy relationships without understanding as a woman how to be feminine and soft and vulnerable. As a six or seven year old human being pushed into adulthood, I mean, for sure my mom was suffering from postpartum. I remember her emotionally just peeling off and disappearing and crying and saying, Lisa, you do it, you figure it out. You think you can do better, you know? And I would just be standing there <laughs> like dumbfounded, but this is why I'm an HSP, a highly sensitive person. I'm not angry for the gifts that I've received and I'm not upset that I have a heightened awareness of how people behave and act, but that is partially why I am socially removed from the lifestyle that I used to live of going out and drinking a lot. I think when you are highly sensitive and I think when you are very in tune to people's body energies of outsiders, it can be very overwhelming and harmful to your body. You're not in a balanced, grounded, peaceful place. And I was, I was hell on wheels. I was angry and lost and confused. I booked this trip to Kauai to heal the mother wound. You need that mothering. And I, I didn't really get it. I really didn't get it. L lots of layers to this relationship with this woman that, you know, should have taught me beautiful and caring and loving, vulnerable things to help me be my soft Lisa. And people can see and feel the difference. It's, it's literally been two months, not even a month and a half. I feel the difference. I see the difference. I, I, I swear angels walk among us and beautiful people help me. I don't know if it's because of all the healing that I've done or all the healing that I'm doing and working on. We started discussing the sexual traumas that I've had in my life. The fact that I have a hip replacement. I don't know if you're aware, but a lot of trauma is stored in the hips. I hadn't booked the womb healing until I got to the hotel. So the synchronicities of the hotel, the first day that it was my full day was a breathwork class, a sound bath and a cacao ceremony. I, of course, signed up for all three breath work. I got a private breath work. She did sound bowls during the breath work. I was one of maybe 10 in the sound bath. I traveled to another dimension in the sound bath. I w it was like a plant medicine experience for me. It felt like years. It felt, at one point I was floating because I remember like briefly waking up a little bit because I realized I could feel the floor and I realized that I was a human. It was just euphoric. And then directly after that, there was a cacao ceremony. I didn't have a transformative healing experience with the cacao, but I was completely okay with that because I had just journeyed during the sound bath. The, the sound bath felt like lifetimes, like thousands of years. Like, you know how the stars and the other planets are like so far away. It felt like I traveled to another planet and came back. And I'm guessing my spirit did take that journey. And that's why I felt like that. And then I did wake up the next morning to an angel number. I woke up at 222 in the morning which with the time change is 622. So not an insanely weird time to wake up, but an interesting number to wake up to. You are seeing 222, it means that the time has come for you to be more self-reflective and focus on the duality of situations. Serves as a reminder that you're on the right track and that your constant pursuit of your aspirations will not be in vain. It is the number associated with balance, collaboration, love, and harmony. I mean, if that wasn't what I had booked this trip for, and if that wasn't what I was experiencing at every turn, synchronicities of my life. Day one was a thrilling hike in the dark holding a matcha latte to Secret Beach. Literally nobody else was there. Literally the beach to myself where I did some meditation and listening to the waves and I started crying there as well. I mean, my body just was, it knew what was coming. It was preparing for the relief. Day two was the Maya Canyon rainbow, which looked like the gates of heaven were coming down from the sky and then a open door helicopter above the sacred island. I mean, this island theory of historians is that Kauai was kept as a sacred space, just like the Native Americans didn't live in Sedona because it was a sacred place. The, whole, the Hawaiians, Polynesians didn't live on Kauai. They would visit Kauai when they needed things. A, a king or queen were going to be born from the queen. There was a place called the birthstone. And I did on day two, right before my womb healing. I could feel the intention of the space. I could feel the power of what had once stood there and happened. I think it's so synchronistic that I did the breath work and cacao ceremony and sound bath bef the day before leaving the womb healing. I caught 333 
on my phone. Again, another angel number. The angel number 333 is closely tied to personal growth, self-improvement. Presence in your life signifies that you are undergoing a period of transformation and evolution. So there's that. Then I decided after the ceremony to go to the beach and rub sand all over my body to cleanse, especially the bottoms of my feet. If you're ever feeling like you are releasing energies or sets or vibrations and clearing them out, I definitely recommend using salt on the bottoms of your feet. Then I felt the next morning to thank Mother Earth. So I did two offerings for her, one in this beautiful tree and one right at the shoreline. And the full moon was gonna be the following day, so it was pretty much full. So I danced with the full moon. Again, they say trauma and pain is stored in your hips, so I feel like the hula dance is very healing to opening up your hips, swaying, get that energy moving. Felt a little weird at first to like hula because I don't really know how to hula. And I did wish to make it to the birthplace of hula on Kauai, but I was not fortunate enough. I, I got exhausted with all the other things and activities that I had planned. Did attempt to do some hula, kind of just started swaying my hips and moving. And then it just turned into, you know, literally just dancing, which felt really fun. I planned to go on a hike. That was very exhausting. I did, I went maybe 10 minutes into the hike and I said, no, I'm not, I'm not up to this. Cause when you do healing and when you work with spirit, you definitely get exhausted. Because I had extra time, I did actually go to this other sacred space, a temple dedicated to Ku. It literally has warning signs that say, this site is, a, is sacred to the Hawaiian people. I actually feel the power of this place. I, from about the age of 10, have I, I know distinctly what happened. I watched an episode of Baywatch and the girl was having dreams of drowning and then ended up almost drowning. And since watching that episode, I then cr created in my mind a fear of drowning. So the irony of the fact that my brother died by drowning and I, and I watched him drown was something super messed up. So I was really nervous to go see these whales because I knew the boat was going to be tiny and on the website they advertised very strongly like you're going to get really wet you may fall out it's going to be very bumpy it's going to be very windy like prepare for prepare for whitewater rafting is basically what I'm envisioning right so I wanted to cancel as soon as I booked it and my breathwork lady was like no you really need to go and I was like but I don't want to go I'm scared like as I'm driving there I wanted to turn around even when I got there standing there I didn't want to get in the boat like I was so resistant of doing it but I have such a connection to whales and I have such a fascination about them. I went to Iceland in 2022. There was a cold rainy day there that I ended up going to the whale museum and spent three hours studying whales. Really wanted to see them. I just didn't want to die and drown on this boat, right? I feel like I called the whale to visit. So the captain explained that the whale, the female whale was probably in heat and that's why she kept flapping around and breaching because she was trying to woo a, a potential suitor to impregnate her. So more womb stuff going on there. Okay, let's talk about day three and meeting Jessica. What a character she is. First of all, her outfit was ridiculous in the best way. She literally packed that to travel to Kauai. And how synchronistic that we met at the coffee shop the morning of Christmas. And she was like, I go to the Hindu monastery every day. I have a close relationship with them. I'll try to get you in. Let me text you, what's your number? Little did I know what was coming up ahead, right? With my hike, the best morning on Christmas, like the best morning. Like I felt like I was the only person on the planet. Another kind of synchronistic moment that happened for me was the book that I chose to bring. I had actually purchased that book, I think March of 2023. Like I I think like six to nine months earlier. I don't remember when it came out, but I ordered it right when it came out. And I didn't really know what it was about. I had read the first couple pages, so I knew that it was kind of rom com and romance and cute and fluffy. So I figured something that I would really want to do after spending so much time healing and adventuring. And the irony is, is the book is based on a mom who turns her firstborn eldest daughter into a caretaker to the younger daughter. It was Im impeding her success with love relationships. I mean, you can't make this up. Like I didn't, I didn't know that when I bought the book. I didn't know that when I packed the book for my mom healing adventure and the book talks about healing the mother wound. Like, does this stuff happen to everybody? I mean, I feel like it can, but do you notice it is more the question. Like, I couldn't not share that. Overall, I cannot emphasize enough how beautifully healing, spiritually powerful, 
incredibly warm, welcoming, beautiful energy the island of Kauai is. Oh, I, I wish it could just be kept sacred. I do know that a few of the sacred spaces that Hawaiians had on the island were literally just paved over. Like they just put streets right through it. I mean, the birdstone is literally four feet from the street, a very busy street. So it's it's not really being considered as sacred as it used to be. It's just, it's heartbreaking. It's, it's almost like watching a church be turned into a mall. That's the closest I can get to what has happened at Sedona and what has happened at Kauai is the American tourists have turned the sacred space of honoring into a shopping center. So thank you for journeying with me. Thank you for staying tuned for the spiritual parts. If there's a city or a place or an activity that you wish for me to journey to and report back. I am your spiritual reporter. That's all for today, my community. Mwah. Bye for now.